Hi everyone, it's Tarek from Tarek's Rock. Thanks for joining and watching today. I am going to be talking about the Hasbro 205 FCC. Uh, before I get into that, I wanted to ask a question. Have you ever had a time when you just wanted to just quit, just stop, just give up, just say forget about it? This isn't working no matter how hard I try, no matter what I do. This just isn't going to work on something that you really, really want and you're really interested in. Well, that's really going to be the main focus of this episode, although I'm going to slowly get to that uh, by talking about the Hasselblad 205 FCC, my favorite film camera uh, in the world, medium format 6x6. So I'm going to talk about three things. So very little about the technical aspects of the camera because I've covered those in more detail in other videos. And two, about the search for the color yellow and getting an image of that. And I want a yellow sunflower. So that's mostly what I'm going to be talking about. And then really the last thing, which is really that question that I asked. And that really is the bigger question in, uh, in everything. So uh, right now, I'm just going to ask you, if you're not subscribed already, consider subscribing and at any point watching this video. And uh, also giving a like if you learn or see if you like it or you learn something in this video because I uh, don't want to end this video asking you that or reminding you or whatever. So I have uh, something else I want to say at the end. So that's why I'm saying it up front. So um, quickly, very little about the technical aspects of the camera. This is the Hasselblad 205 FCC. It's a medium format 6x6 camera with a 110 millimeter lens. It was made between 1995 and 2004, and it was basically made to order. Uh, you couldn't just get it off the shelf, so I placed my order in 2004, the last year they were making it, and I heard that was the last year. I'd wanted it for a long time. And the two technical things about the camera that are important to know is it has a spot meter, a single spot meter that takes 100% of the meter reading, and that's very helpful for uh, photographers to be able to uh, pinpoint check meter readings for of the neutral area, the highlights, the low lights, and then make the decision on what they want to do to meter their uh, film, negative or positive film. And the second thing I wanted to say about that spot meter, it is very accurate. It is accurate to one twelfth of a stop. So I'm done talking about the technical aspects of the camera. So that was a quick wrap up. The, there are more details in the other videos. So uh, about the other videos uh, and a little bit about this video, is I decided to share about this camera because it's so rare, um, I don't know anybody else that has it, is I decided I was going to take one roll of film and I was going to take a single picture of a different subject for each picture. And uh, the, the camera magazine holds uh, 12 uh, images, so I started to come up with ideas for those. So there was going to be a variety of subjects. So I've covered videos on there's the color silver. I highlight the color silver. There's uh, another one on the color red. And then there's another one on green and kind of white beige. Uh, those are kind of blended together <laughs> in that last video. This one is yellow. And to me, this was the most exciting picture. And it was the first picture I imagined. So I'm going to show you. Uh, even before I bought the film, I started to draw out what I thought the idea of a yellow sunflower picture uh, would uh, would be like. And that isn't even the right perspective for this lens, but just to show you that I had a plan for a yellow sunflower. I like sunflowers and the, the yellow natural color, almost an orange color. I, I really enjoy it. I think people like uh, all around the world. So that was the plan and uh, that was the first image uh, that I wanted to take. And this journey started um, six months ago, roughly. So it was in the summer. And I started to look for sunflowers, and it, they were hard to find. So it apparently was the end of sunflower season. I didn't know much about plants, so I didn't know that. But I found a neighbor that had some sunflowers and some nice looking ones in his front yard. And I, and I knocked on his door, asked him if I could take pictures. And I said, yes, I, you know, I've got this rare camera and I want to you know, do a video on it and start a YouTube channel, 
and uh, he, he was he just kind of he agreed and so um, I came back the next day to take the the picture and I set up and it was just it was beautiful the lighting was right uh, had it focused and had it framed and it was nothing like that because the perspective of the lens is different uh, but the Sun was just right and there was a little insect walking on the sunflower and it was getting covered in pollen and that just kind of added some nice character to it and it had the color yellow in there I wanted to fill it with yellow and then I took the picture and right after I took the picture everything went black the, the, the camera jammed I, di I didn't know what happened I thought I thought the camera was was broken or something and I didn't know what happened so it should have gone it, the the two shutters should have moved and I should have been able to see the sunflower again and I, and I couldn't so uh, so this is the first uh, technical challenge and I pressed the uh, dull exposure button uh, cranked the camera and that left it on the same frame I took another picture knowing I was going to overexpose the same image and uh, the same thing happened it jammed again so I went home I did some research and I found out that uh, on some cameras if you let them sit for too long the, the shutters uh, don't release at the same time so they need to be warmed up a little bit like dry fired so I put the empty film magazine on the camera and I fired it a few times and that seemed to get it to take went back set up for the sunflower about an hour later and uh, took the next image and it jammed again to the double exposure thing the camera jammed again so this is not an inherent problem with the camera it's just that I let it sit for a decade so this was very discouraging so this was gonna be my first image and I had a few others planned and then I, I took some videos of that and some were on my cell phone with their different frame rates and I never made videos before so I, I didn't know what I was <laughs> doing and I, I can't show you that footage uh, but it's okay I'm just gonna tell you the story now you know hindsight is uh, better than 2020 vision it's it's a lot better than that so I wanted to take you along the journey with me and that part of it I, I, I couldn't take you along and uh, anyway it was just gonna be showing you errors and what I felt was a disaster <laughs> so so I continued on with the other images taking the picture of the uh, silver coin of the red fire hydrant of the Washington Monument and each one of those was going to be one image one picture uh, you know basically and uh, focusing on one color and I, I went through those and what's missing in a lot of those stories is what I'm talking about this time is the camera jamming uh, several times and having to do the double exposure and losing a frame and so instead of having 12 images I was down to effectively um, four usable ones uh, I think I got five or six total one I, I took twice and the other image I really wasn't that inspired to and I didn't make a video on it so this is the fourth and final image from that one roll of film uh, and uh, throughout this as I was taking those other pictures that were spread over days and weeks I kept looking for sunflowers uh, that sunflower that my neighbor had it died and another one came up but it wasn't the same and um, uh, you know on weekends when I was going on errands there's this one church I passed by out of the corner of my eye I saw a yellow and I pulled over to the side of the road and I looked and they had some sunflowers there in a little pot and I circled back and I went to look and you know, there, there were just these dilapidated small little little ones and then another day at a store I had friends and family looking for them and uh, it was just uh, just discouraging just couldn't get a sun sunflower and for me if I didn't get yellow um, I wasn't gonna make any of these videos I just wasn't going to do it without the color yellow it's just yellow just seemed so important to me I felt pretty closely about red too but that fire hydrant was very cooperative so so we're on to, on to yellow here so what I'm sharing with you that experience continued on for about um, about two months that was a almost a two-month journey and still no yellow sunflower and I had all the other images I was on the 12th and final frame and I still didn't have anything for a week or, or two weeks I just had nothing I had all the other all the images and uh, you know I had the technical problems with the camera jamming I not being able to find the subject and things just not working out 
and I just felt it wouldn't be complete without yellow. And I was just at a point where I was just going to quit and just say, you know, I, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to do the YouTube videos. I'll finish the role. I don't even know what's going to happen with developing. I was just going to stop. I was just going to quit. That was, that was going to be it. And, um, what I did is I still wanted the dream of yellow and I wanted the yellow sunflower, but I gave up on the sunflower. I gave up on the sunflower. I let it go. I just said, forget about the sunflower. And I, and I thought of yellow and I had also considered other yellow subjects. And right when I did, uh, it was late in the evening and the sun was still out because it was around the summertime, uh, fall, late summer, early fall. And it was raining and I looked out my window as in the master bathroom and I looked down and it was raining and the sky was gray and the grass was green. And, and I saw in my neighbor's yard a little yellow. There's just this little yellow speck and it was behind, it was behind the window and behind some mesh that was covered in, in, in water. And I opened the window and I looked and there was one blooming yellow rose. And I thought, okay, at least it's yellow and it's right there. And it was right when I had given up on the sunflower and trying to get that one idea. You know, I gave up on, I gave up on this thing right here. But I didn't give up on the yellow, uh, something natural, and the flower, and there, there's this, there's this flower. I thought, okay, great, it's late, I'll sleep on this, and then the next morning I'll go ask them, it was the weekend, if I can take a picture of their yellow rose. And so I slept the next morning, I woke up, I cleaned myself up, I looked out the window, and the rose is gone. There's, there's, there's no rose, no yellow. And that put me emotionally right back to where I was before and with the technical challenges of, you know, why am I doing this? Uh, what's going to happen? And I thought, oh, they probably just cut the, cut the rows and they're probably having a face inside. All right, I'll, I'll just go after breakfast. I'll knock on their door and say, hey, can I take a picture of your rows? That's not too weird, is it? Uh, no, I don't think so. I'm a photographer. I'm going to ask questions like that. So... So I had breakfast, and then I uh, and I was waking up a little bit more, had my coffee, and started to think, ah, this is one yellow rose, it's gonna look so small in the image, not like the sunflower is gonna fill it up, and it'll look okay, and I was like, ah, it's just gonna look tiny, even though it was blooming. And then I thought, um, going to Harris Teeter, one of the grocery stores here, that's actually a very nice one, we have, they have about two or three hundred bouquets and uh, flower and plant arrangements. And I remember seeing some that had one yellow rose in them or two yellow roses among green and then some other colors of, uh, uh, you know, red and blue and violet. And I thought, okay, well, at least those will look nice. Those will show some of the other colors. I really want to accent the yellow. This is not a macro lens. But maybe I can adjust the uh, depth of field to just focus on the yellow and arrange it that way, make it look bigger. But then the other colors will kind of compete. And uh, then I just thought, okay, fine, at least I'll have yellow in there. So now I was feeling better about it. You know, before, the night before, I really, I'd just given up. But now I was thinking, okay, all right, there's that yellow rose that opened my mind up and I, I, I could see it. And I, and I was able to see it. I just don't know how, the corner of my eye. And so I, I went to, to went, went to Harris Teeter and I walked around and uh, I looked at you know several arrangements and I don't know if I saw a yellow rose but no I didn't see a yellow rose that day in any of the little arrangements I saw some like lilies some really small and some small you know the little tiny sunflower that like sand dollar size the smaller ones. Um, but you know they they just had a really faded look and I was just uh, thinking oh whatever. I was about to leave and I walked around and I saw one bouquet of a dozen yellow roses, a dozen yellow roses. I didn't see one in any of these other, but there's just one bouquet of a dozen yellow roses. So I thought, okay, that'll fill up the frame. It's yellow. It has that nice uh, texture of a rose. That's beautiful, that soft feeling. And I thought, okay, great. So I got that. And so 
So I uh, came home, I set it up. I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what I set up. Uh, I just put the, the vase on the ground, uh, uh, put the bouquet in a vase and, and propped it up. Had the camera looking straight down. Um, and unlike my other images, uh, the perspective and the visualization I had for this one was not a full frame. It was actually, it was the right perspective in terms of distance from the camera to the subject. But the cropping, uh, even though the perspective was right in terms of the distance, the cropping I had imagined was a little closer in. So when I took the picture, uh, the tripod legs in two, two of the uh, corners are, are visible. So I knew that and that was okay because I did not plan for a full frame visualization. So uh, here's how I was able to see. As I showed you before and I explained in some of the other videos, I pre-planned almost every almost every picture. But this one, now I was at a point where I had given up thinking about YouTube, I'd given up really thinking about the camera, about the film, and now I was back to that core part of my creative being, that raw part in the center of each of us that is ever inspired to, to do anything. And now I was looking at a yellow dozen roses. A dozen yellow roses okay and I was just looking at them for what they were I was not looking anymore with my plan for a sunflower I was just looking at what they had and appreciating how to convey the most of what they had and what I wanted to convey I want to convey the color so I picked an f-stop that would blur out the background a little bit um, and have some parts of the roses in tight focus and then slowly start to blur out some other parts. I didn't mind that all of it was not in focus in terms of depth of field. I wanted some of it to fade away, but I wanted some action points on, on where it was tight. So I picked the depth of field that allowed me to do that and my visualization was for a tighter crop. So that's what I did. And uh, then I went to take the picture. I put the empty magazine on the back of the camera. I dry fired it a few times, um, removed it quickly, put the, the magazine with the film in it in the last frame, and this was going to be it. This was all or nothing. This worked. It worked if it jammed. No video, no YouTube channel, and that was it. That was going to be my story. So I had my standards and I was going to meet them. And I took the picture and it worked. So here we are. So we're going to take a look at that picture and what I'm going to tell you about uh, the lab. Uh, I've mentioned this in some of the other videos. This is the first lab I went to. It's my local lab and they are very clear about what they can do and they could develop the film which was great and they offered another courtesy service where they could uh, have the images scanned and put on a disc for me uh, which was good, and um, but that was just going to take a little longer, and they did it. And that gave me the prints I was looking for, and I got back an image that uh, showed um, enough to email, put on a website, and met what they said they could do, and so I was, I was happy with it. And so we're going to take a, a look at that right now, and we're going to talk a little bit more. Okay, so let's take a look at that image.
Okay, so we've taken a look at the image from the first lab, and you can see in one corner there's a tripod leg, and there's also in the bottom corner there's a little bit of fogging of the negative. Um, that uh, is something that's on the negative itself, and I think I didn't put the dark slide in all the way, so I think that was my my bad there. But it did not compromise my actual visualization. So you can see the yellow, so that's clear. Um, and this is about when I, uh, I, I set the camera, um, I set the camera aside, I set the pictures aside, and uh, somewhere around there I actually uh, started the YouTube ch uh, channel, Tarps Rock, and uh, did it on the unboxing of the Hasselblad 907X. Um, and at this time I still didn't have the images that I fully wanted for the videos on the Hasselblad 205 FCC, but I had all the images. You know, I had the different colors and I had some images I could show. Um, and I had wanted to enlarge on some of them, but at this point I didn't know what other lab to go to to have those enlargements made. So by the time I actually started the YouTube channel, I, uh, I, I, I didn't know uh, what other lab was going to do the other work, so that took a while to find as I started the, the YouTube channel. But uh, uh, on the second lab, all right, so I found the lab, and I wanted a 16 by 16 in print made, so I took the negative to them, and they made uh, an Emicon drum scan at 24-bit uh, at 300 dpi of that negative. So same negative that the first lab scanned on a more basic scanner, this is a higher quality scanner. So all the data for the second image, still the raw source of that is the film negative, as in the last one, but the scan is different. Keep in mind when you look at this that all of that data that you're going to look at, all of that detail came from a film negative. That comes from billions of pieces of grain, which is more than millions of, you know, megapixels. So, um, but it all comes out to being something relative, like what can you, what can, what can our eyes see, what size is the print, you know, is it a thumbnail, are we emailing it, are we making a bigger print? So it's all, it's all relative, you know, so, uh, but for me it was the color that was important. So I picked an Epson metallic print, did it by 16 by 16. Let's take a look at that. We're going to talk a little bit more and then I have my closing thoughts. Okay, so that was the lab print from the second lab, the 16 by 16, and I am hand-holding my little vlogging camera, my Sony Zen V1, trying to kind of keep it stable. I got a gimbal uh, to try to try to show you the image as best as I could. It's the 1080p, but I hope you could see the difference, and um, 
I, I hope what came across was the the color yellow, the beauty of the the roses, uh, and uh, I hope you liked it. It's it's fine if you you did or you didn't. Uh, you know, uh, the, the images we like are all subjective. So I like some of my images. There are others I like a lot and others I, I don't really care too much about. And sometimes people like those images and sometimes people like images that I, I don't even like that I've taken. So it's all subjective and it's fine. It's, it's okay whether you liked it or not. Um, at the very least, I hope what came across is the, the beauty of the color yellow and from the white highlights of the yellow to where it had the, the smooth, creamy yellow petals. Um, it doesn't get as dark. This is on Kodak Porta 400 film, which is a negative film. It's not a positive, it's not a slide film. Uh, but if, uh, if that came across for you, I'm happy. And that's what I wanted to share with you. That was the adventure. And this is just the most exciting color for me. Uh, it's natural. I think I just think it makes people happy. So I want to uh, close out now uh, with my closing closing thoughts. And that question I asked in the beginning is that have you ever wanted to just quit on something, something you wanted so much, and it just wasn't working out? And there are many times that you just say, "Why bother? Why, why go ahead with this?" And you just want to stop. Well, from the first frame that jammed to the final frame that I didn't know was going to even work, I went through a lot of that in trying to capture the image yellow. And I was trying to get it in a single sunflower. I went looking for one sunflower and I kept looking and looking and looking for it and it just didn't work out so many problems and I want to stop so many times the technical problems the creative problems but here's what I found I found a dozen roses I went looking for one sunflower and I found a dozen roses So when those things come up to you in life, in your creativity, in whatever you do, there's that time when it just seems that it's not going to work and you don't want to go further. And you can let go of some things, but hold on to your dream. Hold on to what's important and look again. When I let go of thinking in my mind of a yellow sunflower and I opened my eyes I found a dozen roses so please remember sometime when you might come across that that I'm sharing with you a dozen roses <laughs>